What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Gilbert Burns talks Hamzat versus Paulo Costa. At UFC 294, Hamzat Chimaev and Paulo Costa will compete in a highly anticipated bout that could very well have title shot implications in the middleweight division. Heading into the fight, the MMA community has remained split in regards to who they think gets the job done. While Chimaev has been able to use his grappling with great effectiveness throughout his career, the big question is whether he'll be able to do so against Costa or whether he'll wind up in a striking affair like he did against Gilbert Burns. With the fight rapidly approaching next month, Burns spoke to Middle Easy to give his thoughts on the contest, explaining why Costa's size doesn't necessarily make him a tougher fight for Chimaev. Costa, like everybody's saying, he's huge, you know, he's a big guy, but I don't think he gets, he has the heart that I have, you know, I don't think he has the jiu-jitsu that I have, he doesn't have the get-ups that I have, he don't have the submission threat that I have that, kind of make Hamza don't want to grapple you know I think he's I think he's very strong a big guy but I think he's gonna gas and I don't like both of these guys I think a, a dub, double knockout will be the best result but I don't know I think the 50 50 fight with UFC 294 right around the corner it'll be interesting to see how things play out in Abu Dhabi shout out to our first comments on yesterday's video thanks for the support MMA community reacts to Dustin Poirier in Ireland. Dustin Poirier recently posted a photo of himself in Ireland for American top team member Saba Homazi's Bellator Dublin bout. However, fans were quick to crack jokes regarding his long-standing beef with Conor McGregor. Although McGregor is often traveling around the world with his family on a super yacht and may have been traveling while Poirier was in town, that didn't stop fans from making jokes about the situation. One fan responded to Poirier's photo with a word of advice, writing, If you see a drunk man stumbling around trying to score coke and trying to fight old men, it's just Connor, so don't be alarmed. Another fan referenced McGregor's new Forge Stout, which has reportedly been a hit at his Black Forge Inn, writing, Don't drink any of that new stout beer. It might have roids in it. Other fans chimed in on Instagram with one writing, Dustin really pulled up a Connor in shambles right now. And another writing, Dustin about to break McTapper's other leg. While many cracked jokes, some had other ideas, with one fan suggesting McGregor and Poirier once again put their beef behind them. Squash the beef, Dustin and Gary and McGregor. What a team. When fans last saw McGregor in the octagon, he made it clear that there was unfinished business with Poirier from his side. But despite all that, it doesn't appear that the Irish star has shared his thoughts on Poirier's trip over to Ireland just yet. Stay tuned for updates as they become available. UFC fighter suspended for PEDs again. UFC veteran Ovin St. Pru has been suspended for a second USADA violation. According to a statement from USADA, St. Pru recently failed two out of competition tests back to back which led to the discovery that a supplement he was taking had been contaminated. The supplement itself didn't contain any banned substances. However, upon testing the sample that St. Pru provided, as well as a sealed container of the same supplement, both were identified as being contaminated with a banned substance. Despite the fact that the failure was caused by a contaminated supplement, St. Pru was issued a six-month suspension given that it's his second time in this position. Back in 2019, OSP was suspended for three months as a result of a tainted supplement as well, which played a factor in the decision to issue him a six-month suspension this time around. The suspension is retroactive to the date of the first test, meaning he'll be eligible to return to the octagon as of December 17th. The question, of course, is when he'll return to the octagon in the hopes of bouncing back from a knockout loss to Philippe Linz back in February. Shavkat Rachmanov UFC 294 return? Shavkat Rachmanov is looking to compete sooner rather than later after his Noche UFC bout with Kelvin Gastelum was scrapped. Following the event, which saw Jack Della Maddalena pick up a big win over Kevin Holland, Rachmanov took to Twitter, writing, I'm still available for UFC 294 or UFC 295. Rachmanov is currently ranked 6th in the division and is eager to stake his claim to a welterweight title shot amid a sea of contenders that most notably includes Bilal Muhammad, who is expected to fight the winner of the yet-to-be-announced title fight between Leon Edwards and Colby Covington. Given Rachmanov's standing in the rankings, many have also suggested a fight between he and Gilbert Burns once the former title challenger recovers from injury. In the meantime, although Della Maddalena has no interest in calling out any fighter in particular, he made it clear following his win over Kevin Holland that he'd probably accept the first fight the UFC offers him, meaning a bout between he and Rachmanov could be a reality for fans. Whether or not it ends up coming to fruition, only time will tell. UFC Fight Updates This week, news surfaced that Mick Parkin and Kyle Machado would compete at UFC Fight Night 
Allen vs. Craig on November 18th in a heavyweight affair that will see the undefeated Parkin look to build on the success of a win in his UFC debut this past summer. On the flip side, Machado will be looking to make a splash in the division after picking up an August win on Dana White's Contender Series. This week also saw news surface regarding a new addition to the UFC's roster. According to reports, lightweight Kawa Fernandez has signed with the UFC after going on a two-fight win streak under the LFA banner that has seen him pick up back-to-back first-round wins. Last but certainly not least, reports have emerged that top-ranked welterweight Bilal Muhammad will compete in a professional grappling match at ADXC1 on October 20th. The contest will see Muhammad put his grappling background to good use in a high-profile co-main event slot opposite Tariq Suleiman. Muhammad won't be the only recognizable name on the card, however. In the main event, former UFC lightweight kingpin Benson Henderson will take on Nyman Gracie in a highly anticipated affair. With plenty to look forward to before the end of the year, expect more big UFC updates in the weeks to come. John Jones gets called out. While UFC heavyweight champion John Jones is used to getting called out by fellow fighters, he was likely surprised to find his name mentioned by former NBA player James Johnson. While speaking in an interview with Ryan Hollins on the NBA Rookie Life podcast, Johnson explained that he grew up learning martial arts, and as a result, with a year of training, he believes he could take on John Jones. I would need a year. My stand-up game is great, but we all know Jones is a, a collegiate uh, wrestler, you know, uh, mm. really good on the ground, and, and that's not my forte. You know, I, I, I can get on the ground, I can uh, rumble a little bit, roll a little bit, I mean, but to his level, I'm not there yet. I would definitely need a year to work on um, counters and defenses against it, just so we can stay on our feet. As Johnson surmised, Jones grew up learning to wrestle before then learning how to strike after college, the opposite of him, who grew up learning how to strike. Allegedly, he has a 20-0 kickboxing record and a 7-0 MMA record. However, there's been widespread speculation about the validity of those records given the lack of information online. After offering Tyson Fury the chance to compete against him in the UFC, it'll be interesting to see if Jones entertains Johnson's latest comments. Valentina Shevchenko goes off on Judge Valentina Shevchenko was livid following her recent draw with Alexa Grasso at Noche UFC. According to the judges' scorecards, which were released after the event, the deciding factor in the fight was Judge Mike Bell. With the other two judges seeing the fight different ways, Bell's decision to score the fifth round as a 10-8 for Grasso rather than as a 10-9 like the other two judges sparked widespread criticism. Following the bout, Shevchenko took aim at Bell, before then again firing shots at the judge during an appearance on the MMA Hour on Monday. I fought on my heart that I secure three rounds victory and this is again not my fault of the mistake of a judge. And this is not I am who's gonna live with that decision. This is he is who will like forever be remembered with that mistake. And next time when he gonna judge and I don't know if he's gonna be judging another fight as well, he will be like looking from the uh, fighters, corners and their teams with a big, big, big um, like these eyes of um, doesn't believe in that person um, in his professionalism. Given the result, many fans believe that the UFC will match the women up for a third fight. According to Shevchenko, after she made the trip to Las Vegas to compete on the Noche UFC card, it's only fair that Grasso and the UFC make the trip to Kyrgyzstan for a trilogy fight. You know, I think it would be fair and very right to have a uh, next event, I event in Kyrgyzstan, Independence Day of Kyrgyzstan. And it's going to be very smart because it has to be equal, right? We cannot do like Mexican Independence Day twice, right? right? It's kind of like very fair. And I think uh, all the people in Kyrgyzstan, all government in Kyrgyzstan, they will do everything possible and impossible to make it happen. Whether or not the UFC decides to hold an event in Kyrgyzstan, only time will tell. Sean O'Malley reveals horrible news about a fan that was trying to meet him. He said on his recent Timbo Sugar Show podcast that a girl was running up to meet him and she got hit by a car and ended up scraping the side of her face. Here's what he had to say. Bro, this chick got hit by a car running over to see me. Garrett didn't get on video because it was happened so fast, but we were in Reds. We were leaving the Reds. I was like, let's just go sit in the truck for a second. It was super chaotic. So I'm like, we get in the truck and you, I just heard this boom. And this girl gets up and starts run. She got hit, scraped her face on the floor, gets up, starts running. I got hit by a car to see you. And it was just, it was chaotic. <laughs> this girl got straight smoked, like taken out. 
not bad bad but hard enough for her to fucking hit the ground and scrape her face oh. she got taken out by a car and it was crazy i heard it every a bunch of people saw it daniel saw it garrett saw it Dan, like everyone saw it. i just didn't see it because i was sitting in the truck joe rogan reacts to the wwe and ufc merger in a recent podcast with kurt angle here's what he had to say the ufc and the wwe are together now yes they are which is very interesting mm-hmm. very interesting but that's a you gigantic think they're gonna of, you think they're gonna cross my road i don't know uh i think they're definitely gonna cross promote what i'm interested to see is like you know obviously brock was the most successful pro wrestler to ever compete in mma Will we and CM Punk tried it? Uh, I'm gonna be interested to see how many other guys. Bobby Lashley did it. How many other guys are gonna try it? I, when I look at that partnership, I see a lot of fighters crossing over to wrestling. Yeah. But I don't see many wrestlers crossing over yeah, to fighting. Right. I mean, that's a completely different beast. Yeah. I, I don't think there are many wrestlers that could go in there and mix it up with those guys. Well, that's what's so sensational about Brock. It is. He, he you know what? He's adapted to everything in his life top comments judges need to have a post-fight press conference questioning every time someone responded with they should just look at all the rounds by rounds whoever got the most points per round wins the round so valentina won same with cejudo versus sterling i think it would save judges trying to change the outcome of the fight in the fifth round also judges should have to submit their score for each round at the end of the round so they hopefully forget each score by round and just score the fight as they see it each round each round should be a fight in itself period you can't be like, oh man, Grasso with the end of round flurry deserves a 10-8 because she would lose because I gave Valentina three rounds already. That was a personal feeling and more of one championship scoring because the fight is scored as a whole. So that moment made that judge think Grasso shouldn't lose, but all he could do is give it 10-8. You're in the business of trying to physically disable another human being to a point they cannot continue to fight and you're worried about hurting feelings. Love your content, brother. I think Sean showed the blueprint on how to be Izzy. I don't think he will be the same after that fight. Make sure to leave a comment and you might get featured in our next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss any MMA news. Check out our video from yesterday if you missed it. See you tomorrow.